Hi everyone. Okay, so I'm going to post a quick video. No, quick. <laughs> if you haven't seen any of my other videos, but quick's not a common thing. Um, you'll have to excuse the uh, stuffiness. I've got a bit of a cold. Um, but I have so many people who post comments on my videos or message me about uh, one particular topic that I'm a little on the fence about, so to speak. Uh, I figured I'd take the time tonight to clear some things up or at least address the topic. Um, so a lot of people ask me about um, the best way to hand tame a bird. Now, this to me is something that a lot of people are told by their pet stores um, that is easily achievable and honestly, truly, they're setting you up for disaster. Um, most birds that I know that have not been hand raised never become the perfect um, companion animal. Um, a lot of the times they're very nervous of people, they don't understand what's going on, they don't see you as part of their flock, they don't understand that connection. Um, birds are very much so a prey animal. Um, so it's it's normal for them to see something huge come at them and panic because they're like, oh my god, what the heck are you doing to me and why do you want to be near me? Um, that being said, I have seen birds that have been hand tamed as, as either older birds or as young babies who are still very impressionable. Um, a lot of the times... It's not that way, though. Um, I can think of a handful of birds that I know who were young birds or older birds that had never been um, socialized with people as, as hatchlings and fledglings. Um, and it is, it is sometimes very, very hard to, to get that connection to go. I've even seen Daisy. <laughs> She's playing with the kitten. Um, I've even seen birds that have been hand fed who make awful pets. They they don't want to be anywhere near people. Um, prime example, I've got a bird. Uh, actually, it's kind of got one on either side. Um, I've got a bird who was hand raised, and she hates me. She's always hated me. She actually has been like that since day one. And now her sister, me and her. Um, her name is Augie. Uh, she passed away earlier this year. Uh, Augie and I were just the best friends. She wanted to be on my shoulder. She wanted to be playing with my hair. She wanted me to scratch her neck. She was very, very social. And we're talking two birds who grew up together. They are sisters um, from the same clutch and everything, hand-raised by the same person. Um, so it can happen that even birds that are hand-raised make awful, awful Bella. Awful pets. My favorite are tears, so she's whining because the cat's running around, and she doesn't like chaos. Um, now, another bird that I have, Chippy, uh, my cockatiel. Uh, she's the one in the video uh, of my video for cockatiels. Uh, she was actually never hand-fed, and she is great with people. Uh, and I, I think the biggest thing with that is their exposure to people and the kind of exposure they have to people. Um, now I would say 90% of the birds that I know who were not hand raised and were taken in by my people who want them to be pets, the biggest factor in their success is the amount of time that they're allowed out of their cage. Now I know it seems kind of backwards because you, you're thinking to yourself, oh well, if I want the bird to be near me, then why am I clipping its wings, you know, and letting it out? Maybe, I, like, shouldn't I be trying to get near it? And that's the biggest thing, is that you can't be the one trying to get near it. It has to come to you. Um, so my biggest suggestion for people who are trying to hand tame their birds is to let them get out of their cage as much as possible, because nine times out of ten, curiosity will get the better of them, and they will want to come and see what you're doing. Um, even if, let's say, uh, not everybody has a bird room, I, I had the privilege of having an amazing bird room for about a month till I moved. Um, even the bedroom, the bath, the bathroom's a little sketch, uh, make sure you put the lid down on the toilet, because that's just asking for disaster. Um, a quiet bedroom, um, where you can sit and play on your computer, or watch a movie, 
or read a book, put a little piece of millet or anything they really like. Uh, one of my birds actually loves Cheerios, uh, the banana nut and the multigrain Cheerios. Uh, try to stay away from anything too sugary. Um, Cheerios are usually a pretty good, safe treat. Treat, <laughs> not 500. Um, and just put some on your lap or put some on the desk beside you and just let your bird come and visit. And eventually they will, you know, they'll come down and they'll be like, oh, there's a cute, cool little treat here. And, and they will become more comfortable with you after, like over a period of time. If you're constantly trying to get near them, you're seen as a prey, right? So they're thinking, oh, my God, it's coming to eat me. Where if you go the other way around and you let the bird come to you, then they understand, okay, well, it's not trying to eat me, and it's not trying to get a hold of me, and there's really cool food next to it, and it's sharing that with me, so maybe this is okay. And and it, things will start to progress. Um, and now, like I said, there's some birds that will never be good pets, like Augie, or Lacey, who has been hand-fed and lived with the same, like, lived with her sister her entire life, and was exposed to the exact same thing is just not a very good pet bird so it really is a risk you take when you take on um, a bird that's not friendly like when you get a bird if you're new to birds I always suggest getting um, a hand fed bird preferably not a budgie uh, budgies are very flighty I find they're very nervous um, and they're, they're very jittery, and I think a lot of people are nervous about even handling a budgie because they don't want to hurt it. Um, I always suggest something a little bigger. Um, so, cockatiels are usually a pretty famous first bird. Um, they are a little bit more sturdy, and they, they're... It's, you can't really call them domesticated. Uh, birds aren't really domesticated if, if you... If you were to let a bird go, it would, it would, assuming that it didn't, you know, freeze to death, <laughs> it would fare pretty well. Um, to be a domesticated species, um, they have to be able to fend for themselves. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, assuming that you don't live in northern Ontario like I do, um, they would fare fairly well. Um, so, because cockatiels have been part of, of the pet family for so long. They have been exposed to people for generations and generations and generations. So they kind of are predisposed to be comfortable with people. Um, another good um, first bird uh, would be something like a lovebird. I personally love lovebirds. Uh, they are a bit loud. They've got a very high-pitched um, voice. But they make fabulous pets when they're hand raised. Um, they're just so sweet and cuddly, and they want to be right up next to you. And they're curious, like you have no idea. Um, conyers are another good one. I suggest staying away from the sun conyers because they do tend to be very, very, very loud. Uh, same with Quakers. Quakers can be very loud. Um, if you've seen my video on Senegals, uh, I find Senegals make great starter birds. Uh, they are a little bigger, so they are a little bit more expensive. Um, not only the bird itself, but the setup. Um, anything really from that family is is an excellent start uh, because they are they are very quiet. Those that particular family of birds is, like I said, fairly quiet, very responsive. Um, but I think the biggest part, regardless of what kind of bird you get, that's hand raised needs to be hand raised by the right person. These birds are so impressionable at that age. It is so, so, so important to expose them to so many things and so many people and so many environments so that they understand that it's safe. And I think that's the biggest, most important thing is that they need to feel safe. They need to feel that they're not being chased after, that they're, you know, that it's okay to play and it's okay to visit people um, and that it's okay to, to, to socialize with you. So if you do decide to get a hand-fed bird, make sure that the breeder is doing the right thing, um, that they're pulled from the nest at an appropriate age, not too early, not too late, that they are socialized very, very much. The breeder that I get my got my one bird from, <laughs> I should say, um, 
I work with Annie a lot. Um, she actually has a bird room, and her birds are raised in, like, her babies, once they get a little older, are moved from um, the brooder in the kitchen to the bird room once they're uh, down to, like, one, maybe two hand feedings a day. And this bird room has toys and other birds and noises and a TV and and a radio and you name it. So they're very used to, you know, interacting with other birds and, and interacting with toys. Um, and that's why, to me, it's so important when you get a bird that you're trying to hand feed, or not hand feed, but to tame, that you provide them with with you know, a safe place to be, that quiet room where there's, you know, a nice treat or something to play with that's not the cage. <coughs> Sorry. My goodness. Um, so they understand, and they learn that outside of the cage is safe. And the more you can instill the safe into them, the better. And the easier it's going to be. Um, use food. Is a, I know some people think that food motivation is, is like a dirty trick. Hey, hands down, man, it is fair game. If you can convince your bird that, you know, coming and getting millet from you is, is okay, then use millet, use Cheerios, use birdseed. Um, my birds, um, I've got three birds in one large cage, and then Kia by himself, just for safety issues. Um, and Scarlet, my Rosella, um, generally speaking, hangs out around the top of the cage. Um, but I started putting a, a little dish of seeds ver at the very, very bottom, and already I've noticed she's become a lot more comfortable coming down to the bottom of the cage and snooping through the bottom. It's all about comfort and what they know is safe, right? So if you do have a bowl of Cheerios or a piece of millet, don't don't bother with with trying to, you know, try to grab the bird or try to pet the bird. Just let him be. And he'll come down, like let's say, I say him generically, um, the bird comes down and has a couple of Cheerios and flies away and realizes, hey, nothing happened. And then he does it again. And then, you know, two or three days from now, move the, the bowl of Cheerios to your lap. And then maybe he'll come down and, and be like, hey, this is okay. And after two or three days of that, you can look down and say, hey, little buddy, like, welcome to my lap. And they will get used to you. They need to learn that you're safe. And I think that's the biggest thing. So the more you can instill in your bird that, it's, that you are a safe thing and that the world is safe, the more comfortable they'll be with you. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I really suggest that you do your homework when you take home a bird. Um, even if you have a bird and you're trying to make it a little bit more uh, social, it's, you know, this video should help. But if you do have questions, like I said, leave a comment, a message below, and I will get back to you.